Nitro says uh, the NFL is supposed to be a, a meritocracy. That is what they preach, and they say that is what they stand for. Even comparing themselves to the military, but nepotism and prejudice have soiled their shield. Absolutely, yeah. there's well, no, yeah, there's I, no meritocracy and, in the front office. None, zero. Oh, yeah, there's there's no meritocracy on the coaching staff, and you know, and at at points there's none on the field either. Um, you know, so we were talking about Steve Bashotti and y'all asked if, if Bashotti's racist, you know, because I said the, the owners are all racist, right? <laughs> well, um, you know, it, again, like Jose said, it's not that, oh, we, I mean, I hate black people or anything like that, right? right? There's but, different levels to it, yes. But but again, y'all just did the exact same thing that Brian Flores is suing for yeah. to Anthony Weaver. Mm-hmm. Uh, you decided to hire Mike McDonald before you even interviewed Weaver and a couple other people. Yeah. Uh, also, John Harbaugh, two playoff wins in 10 years or, or nine years. Greg Roman, awful offensive coordinator. Are, are you telling me that you don't know any uh, you don't know any minority candidates who might be better qualified for those positions? So let's, let's go back for a second. But, but Baltimore is not moving, right? So, so That's Mike, part of it as well. Yeah. So Mike McDonald, uh, th- it was tweeted out early. Right. It was tweeted out uh, from a Michigan account that he was going to be offered a job and he was going to accept it. Was that before the Anthony Weaver? Because everything happened kind of quick. He they interviewed. It was about the same time. I think it was the same day. So so they're not in trouble because they interviewed another coach before that. Right. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm not even talking about the Rooney rules. Yeah, yeah. But I'm but not essentially, talking about but that. essentially I'm did the same about thing. The yeah. fact that you know who you're going to hire. And you're just going through the motions with these coaches anyway. Well, yeah. Like, I, I, I'm not concerned about the the Rooney Rule aspect of it because um, again, that just comes down to the timing. You know, hey, we technically we we didn't say we wanted you know Mike McDonald. But I just want to clear it up just just to just right. so people understand the difference between why you know the Ravens yeah. aren't getting yeah. sued and why Giants are, are getting sued, right? Like it's it's a technicality, but it's essentially yeah. the same thing. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no, I, I, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's just it's it's when you're when you're making that decision beforehand, before you even talk to these other coaches, and and, and in Baltimore's case, I mean they didn't even conduct a real search, right? right. If we're being honest, um, and, and like I said, you have uh, John Harbaugh there who has just gotten complacent. You have Greg Roman there who only uh, even even his biggest supporters will tell you only knows how to do half the job. Yeah, what are what are we talking about? Like yeah. you're not you're not out there looking for better better uh, coaches. You're certainly not looking at better minority coaches. So uh, again, that is part of it as well. You know, Steve right. Wilkes fired after one year. You know, David Cully fired after one year. Brian Flores fired after three years of, uh, uh, when he was turning that team around and winning games. And you know, you have white coaches who just kind of hang around. And you know, the crazy thing is, man, like we we all see it with Greg Roman. We all see. He's just – he's not capable of being an offensive coordinator, right? No. Um, he can call some plays, you know, in the run game here and there. Like, you know, he he has some scripted plays, but he can't coordinate, right? Yeah. Shout, out, shout out to uh, – shout out to Vach Lombardi. I got that from Vach Lombardi, right? He was talking He was talking about um, – um, who's their coordinator? Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore, right? He says, I like Kellen Moore. He's a good play caller, but he can't coordinate, right? Um uh, that that's kind of how I think about Greg Roman. Except he's, I don't think he's that great of a play caller. Every now and then he, he runs a, a decent you know play whatever, and people are like oh see you know he he can he can yeah. call plays. Yeah, he can Broken call plays. Clocks and blind squirrels, man. Yeah, and what's the difference between play calling and coordinating? Coordinating is about adjusting, making adjustments. You know, adjust to what's what's being called out there. Um, and he definitely can't do that, and he's limited as a play caller, as a passing uh, uh, play caller. Right. That's mm-hmm. why they brought in. Uh, T. Martin and Keith Williams, and my thing is this, right? And, and this is where we get into, you know, black coaches not getting the opportunity. If you cannot call passing plays in a passing league, why are you the offensive coordinator? Right. Why are these guys that you brought in to fix the pass game? How come one of them isn't the offensive coordinator? Because they are comfortable with Greg Roman. Right, and they're not comfortable with T. Martin, Keith Williams, you know, or so- someone else. They're comfortable with Greg, and, and that's what it boils down to in Baltimore. That's what it boils down to in every uh, team around the league. 
Yeah. You know, that's why Airbnb is not a head coach. That's why Byron Leftwich is not a head coach. These owners are not comfortable with them. Yeah. Yeah. We read a couple of comments here. Um, let's see. Deshaun says, if you join the fantasy league, I highly recommend a mid season trade with B. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Deshaun is referring to this, which I essentially won for him yeah. by trading him a couple players while my, my team was, go, was going down in flames. Yes. Congrats, Deshaun. It's not happening again. That's a one time <laughs> thing. One time thing. Uh, all right. Uh, Danny says they call new defensive coordinator Harbaugh's son. Yeah, I think, yeah, they, yeah. He looks like his son, too. I mean, he, he's a young guy. Um, and they asked him basically, like, you know, um, how are you going to deal with veterans on the team? Um, and as B puts the graphic back on the screen, uh, how, how are you going to deal with, you know, veterans, you know, when they're asking you certain things, um, you know, about, about the defense or whatever, basically if they call you out and, and he gave an honest answer and I respect that, but he's just like, look, it start, it starts with saying, like, if you don't know, you just say, I don't know. Right. Like they, they know when you're faking it, which is true, but maybe you should know. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> maybe you maybe should if, know. Maybe if you it's, if you don't know, you shouldn't have that job. It's one of thirty two jobs. You should know. <laughs> mm-hmm. But if if you don't know, I promise you, there is one person out there who's better qualified for that position than you. Yes, yes, it was it was a well thought out answer, but it was the wrong answer, and that stuck out to me as a reason why he should not have gotten that job. Right? It might still work out. We don't. I mean, look, I don't know. Right. I, I don't know. Like, but I don't feel good about it. I can tell you that. Right. Yeah. Anytime these type of hires happen, because it's it's not based off of merit. Everybody's looking at the one year he did in college. And shout out to our man Garnet West, because he sent this to us, you know, uh, looking at the stats of, of uh, Michigan defense over the years, because they'll have you they'll let they'll have you thinking this man completely transformed that program into a defensive powerhouse. And all that really happened was they had one down year, the year before he got there, one really bad year. And he got there and, you know, they bounced back. But the years previously to that, they were consistently a top 20, top 25 school uh, in the country in, in, in terms of defense. So he didn't really change anything, right? Like he caught them on the upswing, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, is that, that doesn't and, mean he, and by the way also uh sorry to cut you off no, there, but uh turned him around turned him into a powerhouse because they played georgia and that walk-on quarterback ripped their secondary apart mm. so mm. how good were they really yeah yeah shout out to rtv he says great content y'all the best thumbs up appreciate that brother <laughs> thank you thank you thank, thank you. you i appreciate that cast me g is here what's up cast me says maybe Lamar needs to start asserting his influence to get Giro up out of here. No more compromise on contract or offensive strategy going forward. So I want to talk about that too, right? Um, we, we didn't really talk about John Harbaugh's um, uh, press conference. Um, they didn't ask him about Lamar Jackson, but um, I did listen to, um, it, it was Engraven, Sarah Ellison, and Kadri Ismail. They did a spaces the other day. And Kadri... Uh, you know, he has an inside track on, on what's going on with Lamar's contract. Right. Um, he got, I'm not sure if he was there. He got it on, on, you know, from a good, a reliable source that he was offered a, a good contract. And, um, basically it, it was just basically, they want to stay, but they just think the Ravens can offer more. They can, they can just do better. So yeah. it, I got the feeling from what he was saying that, Lamar is going to sign a contract. They just, it's just about getting, getting all everything that he wants in that contract. That's what, that's what it seemed like. Um, Or, I mean, look, he he said like, he he said, he didn't say the money, the dollar amount, but he said it wasn't a disrespectful amount. They didn't disrespect them. Although that's all relative, right? Because if you offer, if if you didn't make him the highest paid quarterback, you try to make him the third highest paid quarterback, that could be uh, looked at as disrespect. Right. So, I mean, We'll see, but I think they will get that worked out. Um, but look, I'm not. I mean, he's not signed yet. He's holding out. I mean, it could it could be uh, the money thing. It could be other things. Hey, yes, uh, we're close on the money. We'll get that done. But also, what are you going to do about Greg Roman 
or what are you going to yeah. do? Or not even Greg Roman. Maybe, maybe he likes Roman and Harbaugh. Maybe it's what are you going to do with the O line? Yeah. You know, Hollywood, you, you bring a Hollywood back. Hey, AB's out there. I've been asking you for AB forever. Are you going to, are you going to sign AB? You know, like I need one more person. Uh, yeah. I, I, I like Sammy Watkins. He's nice. He's from, he's, you know, he's from, we're from the same neighborhood or we, you know, we're, we're in the you know, same area. But I don't like him like that. Not in the field. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, can you give me somebody a little bit better? You know, like maybe mm-hmm. it's those things. So he might be trying to he might be trying to force those things already.